A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, November 18. Government officials this evening unveiled a heap of national events in celebration of the island's transition to Republican status on its 55th anniversary of independence on November 30. Minister of Innovation, Science and Smart Technology, Senator Kay McConney, told a news conference that in the coming days, there will be parliamentary debates on the Barbados Charter, the launch of a special commemorative rum, the launch of the Kaipo Digitization Project, and the official opening of Golden Square, among others. Assuring Barbadians the events will be safe, she detailed the major highlights of the historic occasion. We will have the arrival of His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. The Cabinet Secretary will share a little bit more about that later. We will have the ceremony for the installation of the President of Barbados. And that will take place on Monday, November 29th, starting at 11 p.m. in the evening. That ceremony will include the declaration of Barbados as a republic, the inauguration of the president of Barbados, the conferring of honors of the freedom of Barbados on both the president and his royal highness, addresses by the president and his royal highness, Prince Charles, and the oath of allegiance, the swearing in of the prime minister and the attorney general will take place on that auspicious occasion. There will also be the national awards ceremony. Barbados has become accustomed to our honors and decorations, national honors awards ceremony on Independence Day, on and around Independence Day again we will have that on November 30th, and this will take place at Golden Square at 10 a.m. It will be presided over by the president, and that is the occasion on which the oath of allegiance, the swearing in of cabinet ministers, will take place. On that occasion, of course, will be the presentation of honors and the prime minister's address to the country. In addition to Britain's Prince of Wales, Barbados will also host several leaders. To date, we've had approximately seven heads of government that have accepted um, the invitation to attend. Um, and we anticipate that we might have a few more. Um, so right now, around seven. Um, there, there is one thing that I would wish to reiterate, and I think the CMO, the Chief Medical Officer, has also said that the protocols that are in place, the health protocols extend to everyone who um, enters uh, or specially invited guests. And when I say or specially invited guests, I mean everyone, whether it's a head of state or head of government, they're also um, will be in compliance with the, um, the COVID regulations with respect to, you know, vaccinations or rapid tests. Across the country, the National Cultural Foundation has already embarked on a number of projects celebrating our cultural heritage. Chief Executive Officer of the NCF, Carol Roberts, noted that not only was NIFCA up and running online, but so too is the Independence Mural Project. So in uh, Bridgetown, it is going to be the fence um, in front of the fisheries department in Bridgetown. In St. James, it's going to be opposite the fence at the Trent's Community Center. And the artist for that is Shane Eastman. The artist for Bridgetown, I'm sorry, is Shane Eastman. The artist for Whole Town is Sherry Nichols. In Oystens, the mural will be installed on the main road, which is uh, diagonally opposite Granny's Restaurant in Oystens. And the artist is Kevin Hall. And the fourth mural will be installed on the grounds of the Spikestown playing field in St. Peter. And the artist for that project is Carlisle Trotman. Added to that, we also have murals in the parishes across the island. And that project commenced last week. And that will also, it is also anticipated that all of the murals will be completed uh, by the end of next week. And so we have, parish, we have murals at the St. Lucy's Parish Church for the parish of St. Lucie, at the Hillaby Turners Hall Primary School in St. Andrew, in St. John at the St. John Post Office, in St. Joseph at Andrew's Factory, in St. Thomas near the Mini Roundabout in Jackson, in St. George in the Glebe, in St. Philip 
are on the Princess Margaret School wall and in St. Michael at the Israel Lovell Foundation building. And so that's our independence and NIFCA mural project. The search is still on for a missing American woman, police said today, amid widespread reports that a body had been found. Samara Bristow, who has been staying at Ericot St. Thomas, was reported missing by her mother, Samantha Bristol of Queens, New York, on Tuesday. Her mother said she last spoke to her daughter sometime between 6.45 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. that day. In a statement, police vehemently dismissed the misinformation as both reckless and unfortunate, and urged those who set out to deliberately create misleading information and stories to desist from such. Lawmen continue to appeal to anyone with information about Samara's whereabouts to come forward with information. Samara is between 5 feet 7 inches and 5 feet 8 inches tall and is totally built and full-breasted. Bristol hair is styled in black box braids. She has a slightly long forehead, oval-shaped eyes which appear to be puffy, small mouth and lips, and straight teeth. Her clothing at the time is unknown. Anyone with information can contact the District D Police Station at 419-1726 or 1729 Police Emergency 211 or any other police station. In today's COVID-19 update, 252 positive cases were confirmed from 1,681 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Wednesday. Of the new cases, 70 persons were under the age of 18 and 182 were 18 years and older. There were 841 people in isolation facilities and 7,573 in home isolation. One death was recorded on Wednesday. A 73-year-old Barbadian woman passed away at the Harrison's Point isolation facility. She was unvaccinated. The death toll now stands at 205. Under the National Vaccination Program, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 133,458, 49.2% of the total population, or 58.4% of the eligible population. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, public servants and pensioners in Guyana are set to receive a Christmas gift from the Earth and Alley Administration. Finance Minister Dr. Ashley Singh today announced they will receive more money in their pockets just in time for the Christmas season. He also announced a special payout for frontline workers. Your government will be paying an across-the-board increase of 7% to public servants, teachers, members of the disciplined services, constitutional office holders, as well as government pensioners. This increase will be granted retroactively to 1st of January 2021, and work will start immediately to ensure that it is processed and paid to eligible employees together with their December salary and in time for the festive Christmas season. Instructions have already been issued for the work to commence immediately to implement these measures we have just announced. Your government has set aside an amount of $400 million for a special 2021 payout to be made to frontline workers in the health sector who have continued to face extenuating circumstances in the daily discharge of their duties as our country and the world continue to battle the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic. Further afield, the death toll from massive floods and landslides that devastated parts of British Columbia is set to rise, with the Canadian province declaring a state of emergency. More in this report from Global News Canada. 
Days after being ordered to evacuate, these scenes are still playing out. Helicopters working nonstop, rescuing those in need. While others who managed to get out safely are reliving the experience, the shock still settling in. We're like, oh, that'll never happen. And then uh, next thing you know, it's at your door. And then the water had come around the corner, and that's when we started panicking. In the two days since 7,000 residents were ordered to evacuate the city of Merritt, waters have started to recede, but have left bridges, potable water sources, and the wastewater treatment plant compromised. Without that, we cannot bring them back. Merritt Mayor Linda Brown speaking for the first time since residents were ordered to leave on Monday, now pleading with those who've stayed behind to reconsider. Home is what we're used to. On the other hand, it, it's, um, it's really hard on the staff that are, are looking after the city at this point. Our priority is doing the assessment work and finding out what needs to be done, and then we'll have an idea of how long that work will take. In other words, there's no timeline, leaving everyone in limbo, including these truckers. Oh, we're a little bit outside of merit here. Still stuck, waiting at the city limits. Main issue is food and water and knowing what's going to happen next. But it seems things are changing by the minute, no matter where the storm hit. Our water system is, let's just say it's limping. In Princeton, hundreds of homes have been placed under an evacuation alert. That's in addition to the 295 properties currently under an order in the central part of town due to the ability to supply natural gas and safe drinking water. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.